Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Scotland's Future Series podcasts, the University of St Andrews projects looking at Scotland's future. And I've got three colleagues joining me today with two incredibly exciting and interesting projects. I'm joined today by Anne Daffershofer and um, Tory Champion, who've got a really interesting project about um, the project's called Looking North Artistic Interactions with Landscape and Northernness in Scotland. So I'm going to ask you about that in a moment. And I'm also joined by, I'm a professor of practice at the School of IR, by my colleague Roxani Cristalli, who's got a project on growing roots, teaching and making with a sense of place. These are great, really interesting and current projects. Um, Roxani, can I start with you? Can you tell us just a little bit bit about your project. What's it about and why did you come up with the idea? What what inspired you? Yeah, thank you, Stephen. So I'm a lecturer at the School of IR. I'm your colleague at the school. And a lot of the education about international relations and a lot of research about international relations directs the gaze of IR, international relations, elsewhere. And I was interested in what would happen if we rooted those same questions and practices right here where we are in Scotland and treated where we are as political. And I noticed in my time at the school that a lot of the education is about other places, but our students don't actually get taught very much about Scotland and indeed know very little about the natural environment here in St Andrews. And so the project came out of a class that I developed called The Politics of Nature and Place in which the students and I consider what is political about nature and place, and specifically this place. How do we understand politics differently if we center questions of nature and place? And how do we feel differently about our own lives through the lenses of nature and place? So what the project will do is take those questions outside of the academy. And I will speak to creative practitioners, artists, poets, museum curators, land activists about how place shapes their work, their sense of self, and their relationships. Well, before I come to Tori and Anne, I want to ask you a question then. You're from Greece originally, yes. um, working here. How does sense of place inform your work? Because I'm really interested that, that actually I think you make, we're a very international university, colleagues, we're really lucky to have colleagues from throughout the world, but based in this um, corner of Fife. How does how it impact your work? That's a great question. One of the assignments that I ask my students to complete is actually to write a place biography. Mm-hmm. Who are you in relation to place? What are the places that have shaped you? Not just by name. I'm from Greece. I was educated in Boston. I now live in Cooper. But the features of that place, what are the seas, the mountains, the winds that raised you, the wildflowers, the animals? And so how place shapes my work now is I moved to Scotland four years ago and I had curiosity about landscape and about nature because I've carried that with me everywhere I've lived. But I didn't actually know very much about what was around me. English is my second language. So I could point to things, but didn't know what they were called. And a lot of the plants that flourish in Scotland, for very good reason, are very different than the ones that grow in the Mediterranean. So I found myself at a loss. And I found I had to find ways to acquaint myself with place intentionally and deliberately through taking walks with people who knew better, through books, through podcasts like BBC Scotland Outdoors that I love. And then I thought about how can I create that experience for my students and for people who have similar curiosity, but also start as beginners as I did. We're both second year PhD researchers in the School of Art History. And though we both have very different areas of research and works on the contemporary period, I work on the early modern period. We both engage quite a lot with artists who are naturalists or are somehow um, somehow find themselves immersed in the natural environment in in their practice and um, we're also quite passionate about including an eco-critical perspective in our work as historians and um, so Anne came up with this great idea to construct a talk series that would um, be online at least at first for greater accessibility and um, in which we can talk to artists about how the concept of landscape and energy ethics, too, 
Um, and in particular, alternative approaches to those two kind of big and, and weighty ideas um, inform their practice as they're doing it right now. And so we constructed this talk series in two parts. The first part has occurred over the course of the last semester. And um, we have just been talking with the artists themselves and um, providing them with space to really dive in to um, the history of, of their own practice and work and, and also the future of it and um, how they engage with all of these key themes. And then in the next semester, we'll be pairing them with a scholar or writer whose work deals with similar ideas and just kind of allowing them to go wild in a conversation that we think will be really engaging to our audience, which is made up of the general public and um, those are colleagues within the university community, but um, just giving them that time to um, sort of be free, talk through their work, and um, give sort of space for audience members too then to think in new ways. I think it was also meant on a more conceptual level to sort of see who's actually in Scotland or from Scotland yeah. um, and sort of utilize, I suppose, those networks that may exist and we don't know of yet because both of us were not from Scotland originally. So it's just been a really great joy to actually just, you know, see what is actually already there, um, how can we fit into those networks and how can we try to contribute to them um, and also maybe make new connections. And I think um, both for the for the talk series, but also in our research, we're really interested in holistic approaches um, as we go on and we'll move through the second part of our series. We're also going to do a screening of an artist film in St. Andrews and we want to try to involve also local food producers and the catering and just sort of really branch out. Um, so, yeah, so I think it was very much about also maybe creating our sense of place here and putting down roots and meeting people, connecting people. Um, and, and really just encourage, I guess, through our talk series, both for the artists, the writers that are involved, for ourselves, but also the general audience, to really engage with those super complex themes through art and writing, um, and also try to do our very best to you know, start embedding that more and more uh, within what we think a really healthy society and a democracy needs. Um, and as we both you know, love Scotland, and we really, we're really grateful that we can live here, um, this is something that we feel we want to contribute, you know, to, to this country that has welcomed us with open arms. Such fascinating answers. Thank you. And you, you, you talked about the fact that you all come from outside Scotland, but you're based in Scotland and each of your projects reflect on this sense of, as Roxani said, this sense of place. I'm wondering, can you talk a little bit about how your sense of place impacts on you, your project and your work? And, and actually, and I'm going to ask each of you this, that same question, but also, why should people hear, you know, how can they contribute? What should they look out for during the course of your project? Yeah, I think that's a really wonderful question. I think for me, um, I moved to Scotland in 2019, so shortly before the pandemic. And before coming here, I lived in Berlin, so a pretty big city for five years. And I think just being in Scotland throughout the pandemic has just been, has just initiated such major life changes, really. Um, and I think that reflects both of my research and I guess was also one of the main motivations to pursue a project like this. And I think um, I think it's I, it, it might be a bit stereotypical, but I think the landscape is just really special here. And, you know, being able to explore and experience that in a really direct sense and, you know, getting a different feeling um, of yourself, of your body, of your mind. Um, you know, in in the Scottish landscape and experiencing the energies that seem to be so inherent to them. I don't know, I think it just, if you're open to it, I think it can really change your perspective. And so, as I see myself staying here, um, <laughs> I think this is why I would like to, to contribute to what I think, you know, um, a society that is, that is positive um, sh should contain. And I think um, just really trying to disrupt people's everyday spaces and getting them to engage with different cultural um, you know products if we want to call it that or you know art and, and writing and literature and all these things is really important and I think it can 
besides like an intellectual value, I think it can just um, really contribute to one's life's quality. And I think everyone would contribute from that within a society. So um, that's what I hope people would gain. And that's why I hope they would uh, tune in or watch our videos on YouTube. <laughs> Good. So Roxani, before I come to you, Tori, just, just to build on that. One of the reasons I was, I think we're quite keen to discuss your projects, although they're different projects together, you can see some of the similarities there, can't you? So what would be your response to, to my question, but also some of Anne's comments there as well? Yeah, a very similar response, actually. So mm. um, one aim, one hope that I have for this project is that it decenters humans and that we look at our work not just through what humans produce, but how do more than human elements come into our lives. So how is what I write about inflected by light? I am a creature entirely nourished by light. And we're recording this in a very dark room on a November day. But the light outside is spectacular. So what happens if we center light, sea, mosses? How do the stories that we tell about ourselves and the place change? Um, there's a beautiful co quote by Alan Gosso called, place is a piece of the environment claimed by feelings. So I'm curious to know what are people's feelings that lay claim to place. And one worry I would have or one fear I would have about the Scottish dimension is I don't want people to think you have to be born in Scotland Absolutely to not, be yeah. attached to Scottish place. I'm very interested in how people lay claim to place and to feelings about it when this is not their home of origin. Well, that's a really interesting point. I mean, of course, people in Scotland would describe ourselves as a mongrel nation because mm -hmm. we are all, like every place in the world, made up of people from all over the world. The human history is one of migration, immigration and emigration. Mm -hmm. That's a really interesting point. And nowhere do you see that more apparently than St Andrews with just so rich internationally. Tori, can you give us some of your reflections on that? And, and and, and that question is somebody who came from overseas, a new Scot, as you all are. Um. <laughs> yes, I suppose along those same lines, um, I, I come to this project fully aware that I am most likely only a temporary resident in Scotland. I'm here for my PhD and I feel really at home here and very welcomed and embraced by the community, but I will likely be here for um, maybe not even the duration of my PhD. So for just a, a short period of time, and I think the way that I would answer your question is to say that I believe Scotland to be an ideal place for our project to begin, but I think our aim is to have it serve as a model approach that could apply to any place. So. We're rooted in Scotland, you know, at our origin, but um, we would like for others to see what we're doing and apply the same principles to their own place. Yeah, yeah and I, sorry. Sorry. And. Yeah, and I think um, also in terms of, I guess, landscape or the concept of landscape in Scotland, I think it's very much uh, centered around obviously tourism um, and also oil and gas and sort of like extractive um, activities in one way or another. And so, for us, it was really important to explore alternative conceptions of um, what quote-unquote nature or landscape especially within a Scottish context can mean and I think there's many things that can be transferred also to to other countries um, so yeah yeah Roxani yeah listening to you both speak two things jump out that have resonance with my own work the first for me is this coexistence of beauty and loss Scotland is beautiful, and it's also a site of violence, a site of loss for a lot of people, be it loss of habitat, mm -hmm. be it the birds that are dying on the beaches of St Andrews where we are because of bird flu, mm -hmm. be it a history of land dispossession um, through the land clearances and still quite an unequal land ownership picture. And so I'm very um, cautious and hopeful not to romanticize landscape and place, but to really see that coexistence you were talking about of beauty and loss, of violence and joy. And then the second thing I thought about um, listening to you speak is about place and transience. Um, most of our undergraduate students are only with us for four years, mm -hmm. though a lot of them choose to come back and we're delighted to have them. And so I say to them, you don't have to wait for your forever place to develop an attention to place and to grow roots. And I think sometimes for a lot of them, that transience means they never become grounded here. They never build their attachments. And so some of what this project and my teaching at the university does is hope to disrupt that and to give them opportunities to be rooted 
even if they then have to uproot themselves and build those roots somewhere else. Great. So a final question for each of you very briefly. These are really interesting, exciting projects, and obviously you want people to engage with them. So if people are listening to this and they, they want to engage, and I'm going to come to Tori, then Anne, then Roxani. What's your message? Very briefly, what's your message to anybody listening and, 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 and why they should engage with your with your project? I'm just so thrilled that um, we've managed to um, capture the enthusiasm of this incredible group of artists and writers. I think that we've just had really a lot of luck with a stellar lineup of individuals with such um, rich practices and ideas and creativity and so um, no matter your sort of area of study within or without the university or the discipline you find yourself in um, I think that a lot can be gained from these discussions. Thank you. Uh, anything you want to add to that? Yeah I agree and I think it's a good way of um, maybe broadening your sort of view on who's actually in Scotland, what contemporary artists, contemporary writers are there, because they're really exciting, um, and they engage with those central themes of ours in so many multifaceted ways. So I think it's really interesting, and it'll shape um, the way in which you experience your surrounding, I'm sure. Um, at least that's what it did for us, I think. Mm-hmm. Roxanne? Yeah, two, two opportunities to engage. If you're local to Scotland broadly, please come to one of our events. So my project is just starting up. So in the winter and spring of 2022, 2023, there will be several dialogues with artists, with museum curators on what place means to them. So please attend. We will try with these participants' permission to record some of them and put them online. So look for those there. And if you cannot do that, then I invite listeners to think about their own place biography. Who are you in relation to place? What are the places that have shaped you? What kind of relationships to non-human or more than human elements um, influence your work, your sense of self? And how would the story of your life be different if you centered those as opposed to your profession or just your home of origin or other features of your biography? Fantastic. Well, Tori and Roxani, thank you for First of all, thank you for your projects. Really excited um, to see the work that you're going to produce over the next few months. And thank you for bringing your perspectives to us. And thanks to everybody who is listening today. And there'll be details again about some of these projects that you can find on our Scots Future Series website pages. Mm-hmm.